Good morning, everyone. I'm going to uh, call our open session meeting to order. It is 9.30 and would ask that you join me. Stand, please, for a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. Okay. Next, next item on our agenda is uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Does any member have uh, any pecuniary interest to declare? Seeing none. Turn to Mr. Cribbs, please, for rise and report motions of the in-camera session. Thank you, Warden. There is one matter to report, which is that Lambton County Council has ratified a collective agreement with ONA LPH, that's the Ontario Nurses Association at Lambton Public Health. It's a four-year collective agreement uh, that runs from April 1st, 2016 to March 31st, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Krebs. We have two delegations this morning, Council, and uh, one will be by uh, Councillor Gillis and the other by Ms. Laurel uh, Van Domlin. Both are affiliated with the uh, corporation, so unless Council deems otherwise, um, I wouldn't be looking for a motion to permit these delegations past the bar. So if you'd like a motion to do so, Deputy Warden Veen? Okay. Okay, moved by Deputy Warden Veen, second by Lonnie Knapper to permit the uh, speakers to cross the bar. And I will remind each of you that uh, we do have a 10-minute limit. Um, and I will first invite uh, Councillor Anne-Marie Gillis, Chair of the Lambton Community Health Study, to come to the front to present the uh, Lambton Community Health Study's final report. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and uh, members of County Council. The Lambton Community Health Study has been a long and arduous journey that started back in 2007. And it, um, it started as a direct result of uh, questions that were raised in the petrochemical industry and how it affected the human health in the uh, area of Sarnia Lambton. First of all, before we get going, I would like to acknowledge the, there are some members here that are on the board, some from the, that have been with us since the actual beginning. And if you would stand and be recognized, I would appreciate it. Uh, we have Kevin Churchill. We have Crystal Pileschi. We have our independent observer, Mayor Jane Marsh. And our community roundtable and vice chair, Allison Mann. Thank you. When, um, when we first got together, Again, as I said, there was the concern that uh, we have a serious problem in the Sarnia Lambton area. And that problem is, is there, um, how does our proximity to the petrochemical industry affect the health of the residents of Lambton County? And to put this into context, I would ask Allison to step forward to the microphone, please, and um, outline why we felt that there was a community response to some of the issues that were being raised on the national level. And the clock is ticking. Hmm? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just to cover off some of the uh, media coverage that has been given towards our community uh, about this issue, a number of years ago there was an article in the Globe and Mail. It was a two or three page feature which referred to our community as slow motion Bhopal and Ground Zero. There was also a feature in Chatelaine magazine uh, which as well presented a negative picture of our community. And part of the reason we were concerned about this, the media that we're talking about are national media and also pieces that the public looks at. Chatelaine Magazine is one that the general public would be seeing. Another feature that was actually quite interesting was Men's Health Magazine, which you certainly would not think of uh, covering our community. It had quite a large feature. It might have been about six 
pages which talked about our community and some of the negative impacts that were going on. Uh, there was also an article in the Toronto Star a number of years ago which commented on where are all the boys gone. Um, and there's also been multiple documentaries that have occurred on our community. You may remember seeing the one, The Beloved Community, uh, which was one in our community and they came and presented and actually filmed the ending of the, the documentary inside the Sarnia Library Auditorium. So as a result of that, we felt that there had to be a response and a community-wide uh, came together, formed a multifaceted group that compiled the Medical Officer of Health, County of Lambton, City of Sarnia, Village of Point Edward, Township of St. Clair, Anjadong First Nation, Kettle and Stony Point First Nation, the Occupational Health Clinic for Ontario Workers, the Sarnia Community Roundtable, the Sarnia Lambton Chamber of Commerce, the Sarnia Lambton Environmental Association and Victims of Chemical Valley. We established a governance model and board in 2008. That was phase one and that took almost a year for us to complete the terms of reference because if we were going to seek funding for a, um, a health study, we needed to have a governance model in place in order to apply for grants. Following that, uh, we entered into phase two where we did a scientific literature review of which we received provincial monies from uh, to determine if there was anything out there that would remotely uh, um, compare to what we were trying to do and we found that there wasn't anything. We did do a community engagement. We did an online survey, a telephone survey and five focus groups and the reason we did that was that we wanted to pin down the questions that people wanted us to zero in on. Those questions in phase two were the exposure and risk assessment, what chemicals are Lambton residents exposed to, cancer, are cancer rates higher in Lambton County compared to reference population rates, respiratory health, are childhood asthma rates higher in Lambton County compared to the reference population rates, and the reproductive health, what is the current picture of reproductive health in Amjadong First Nation and surrounding areas. We, at that time, encouraged participation at the Ontario Health Study. Uh, the Ontario Health Study, unfortunately, uh, when we uh, w started to work and form a uh, partnership with them, stalled, and uh, we could not call on them at that particular time. They have re-emerged, they have a new <coughs> mandate, and um, we are participating as a partnership with them. We also formed a partnership with Cancer Care Ontario. Uh, Dr. Lori Chan was the lead on that. And we, had, we considered ways to improve communication with Lambton County regarding industrial accidents, and that's ongoing. <clears throat> in phase three, we concentrated all our times and efforts on trying to raise money to actually do the health study. Five million was the amount that was put forward in, uh, um, uh, I can't remember exactly what you want to call it, but it was uh, a round table, more or less, again, coming of all the stakeholders, coming back again to define uh, what, how we were going to do that. So we created a specific task force in order to do that. And in May 2014, we secured a commitment of 1.45 million from the Sarnia Lambton Environmental Association. That in itself was pivotal because prior to that, the community health study only wanted to rely on provincial funding. And when we realized, oh, sorry, uh, provincial and federal funding, when we realized that that was not going to, to work to our advantage, um, and speaking to research scientists, they encouraged us to seek out help from industry and form a partnership. So again, we pursued matching funds from the federal and provincial governments. We had several meetings with them, both federally and provincially. Um, that occurred right at the time of elections. So we thought that we had something in the works and then uh, the government changed. We did attend a CIHR federal research forum in Ottawa and these, uh, those, those um, efforts were ultimately unsuccessful. And the reason they were is because the, the, the way that you get funding from the feds is you have to work through research grants. And the CIH are, are the ones, the overall umbrella that you seek out to, to get those research grants. And that proved to be a huge impediment to us. Having said that though, we did have a great ally in Health Canada by Dr. Michel Camus who himself had to retire early because he is suffering from cancer. But he opened the doors for us and he allowed us to make new partnerships with new research scientists. And one of those I would call on Crystal Pileschi to speak to with regard to the respiratory health component of the health study.
All right, so um, as a result of discussions at the CAHR forum, we realized that there was some research going on around asthma in uh, Ontario. Um, we identified that Dr. Teresa Toe is um, a leading researcher um, and the lead on the Ontario Asthma Registry, um, where they look at not just hospitalizations or specific um, data points for asthma, but they try to identify the actual prevalence or number of people in Ontario that have asthma based on hospitalizations, ER visits, and um, OHIP claims. Um, so we have been in contact with her um, since that time. She's provided some of her data that they have, and we've, um, um, we have an understanding that we can continue to work with her um, as a public health department into the future to further understand uh, the asthma rates in our community. So looking at that, we took on that partnership with uh, respiratory health. We also did the same thing with cancer, with Cancer Care Ontario. And um, Dr. Eric Halawati has created um, an overall um, report that unfortunately we cannot give you the results of because it's been embargoed. But um, we're under the understanding that it will be released sometime this year, which will uh, give us uh, give a certain sense of comfort to the people who are living in uh, the, the uh, Sarnia-Lampton area with regard to cancer rates. The reproductive health, we have been very fortunate to link up with Dr. Lori Chan, who is um, a worldwide scientist, and he is working directly with Am Jirong and Sarah Plain to uh, continue the research. So we feel very fortunate that we've had that opportunity to break down the components uh, that we were looking for as was given to us by the uh, people of, of Sarnia and Lambton area, of what we wanted, they, they wanted us to look at and realize that seeing as we couldn't do it as one big study to break up those particular um, questions and have other researchers do that work for us and then bring back the conclusions to us so that then we can report it out to the public. The only one that we haven't been successful in is the first question, which is the exposure and risk assessment and we have a recommendation on, uh, that we would ask the County Council to uh, forward for us so that we can ha see some movement on that. So in conclusion, the Lambton County Health Study established a strong model of community-based participation to achieve collective health-related goal, and we feel very good about that. The political will that was generated through the board enabled connections to Canadian and international researchers studying the environmental impacts of industry in our area. The Lambton Community Health Study Board was able to engage Cancer Care Ontario, Health Canada, and academic research in support of our investigation and secure a funding commitment from industrial partners. The Lambton Community Health Study was able to commission a literature review of possible health effects and successfully engage the community. The Lambton Community Health Study Board felt strong relationships, sorry, built strong relationships and connections between multiple stakeholders in pursuit of its goals. So I feel strongly that through the efforts of this group, significant progress has been made. The following report documents the successes, the challenges faced by the Lambton Community Health Study. But I'm very proud to have been able to serve as this role, and I would like to thank the board, our funders, including the County of Lambton, the Province of Ontario, Health Canada, the Sarnia Lambton Environmental Association, the Sarnia Lambton Chamber of Commerce, our academic partners, and especially the community for their ongoing interest and commitment to a healthier Sarnia Lambton for future generations. And up on the screen now, you will see the recommendations, and Madam Chair, for the very first <coughs> recommendation, we will need a, a motion. And that recommendation is that the County of Lambton, Amjadong First Nation, Kettle and Stony Point First Nation, jointly request the Ontario Ministry of Environment and Climate Change to conduct a screening hum human health risk assessment. And with the other uh, recommendations, we will be continuing. The very first recommendation um, we have already discussed with Amjadong First Nation and Kettle and Stony Point, and they are in agreement with that. So it falls to the County of Lambton to be in agreement with that as well. And if there are any questions, I'm here to answer, and our team is as well. And if not, thank you very much for your time. Okay. Councillor Arnold? No, okay, so you're making, uh, Councillor um, Gillis, you're yes. making the motion. Councillor Gillis is making the motion, second by Councillor Arnold, uh, with respect to recommendation one. I too wish to uh, acknowledge on behalf of County Council the work of this group over the past eight years. Many of you have come and gone from this committee and this effort. 
Um, it was a tremendous undertaking. I thank you, Councillor Gillis, for your leadership, and uh, um, to you, uh, Mary Jane Marsh, for your independent oversight to this process, and uh, to our staff who are here today, Crystal and Kevin, and uh, um, Alison Mahan from Community Roundtable. I know that everybody cared very deeply about this process, and we should also uh, be grateful that the Sarnia-Lambton Environmental Association stepped up uh, to support public health in a, and a, uh, an effort in this community. Um, I see, Councillor Bushy, you have a question or comment you wish to make? I have a question. Um, I supported this uh, issue right from the beginning. Uh, 2000 started 2007. That's a long time ago. Um, how much money have we spent so far uh, from public money? That's the first question. Uh, the second question is this. I'm, I started to lose a little confidence. I'm sorry. After so many years, uh, I like to continue with my support. I'm having a little hard time doing that. Uh, I, I, I never thought, you know, pigs will fly, but I'm told now, you know, pigs may fly or could fly. I just have mixed feelings about it. Councillor Gillis, you wish to respond to that? Uh to clarify. Yes, uh, thank you, Councillor Bushy. What we're doing is we're winding down the Lambton Community Health Study. We aren't asking you to support the Lambton Community Health Study as it, as it has evolved over the past seven years. It is now complete. What we are looking for is rather that the uh, Lambton County Council will support the, the recommendation that we're making to conduct a screening health uh, risk assessment, but that the Ontario Ministry of Environment and Climate Change is the lead on that, not us. And further, your second question, or your first question, I should say, was how much money was spent? Um, I don't have a con uh, particular breakdown on that, but Kevin, could you give us... Uh, we have received monies from a county over the, the every, every year since we've started. Um, some money was given for the actual literature review, but we have just had operating dollars, and I think it's average $15,000 a year, but I could be incorrect. Um, I can get the exact figures, but just based on my recollection, um, we received $50,000 from the provincial government to do the, the risk assessment, or sorry, the literature review. Um, and then we did apply for uh, funding through county council um, as part of the environmental um, fund that uh, comes from fines that are generated to industry through the POA. Um, and I would say roughly in the neighborhood of $25,000 over, over several requests uh, came from that fund to uh, support the efforts of the group. And then the other um, support was in, in the form of in-kind staff support, so from those of us at Lambton Public Health. Um, also, Kevin, just, just we would be remiss. We did receive funding from the Sarnia Lambton Chamber of Commerce uh, for specific studies that, and uh, focus groups that we put together. We also received monies from the Sarnia Lambton Environmental Association, mm -hmm. uh, I believe to the tune of almost $30,000 mm -hmm. over the course of time. We, we so, can provide a full breakdown. I was just yes, about if you'd like that. Money. So the actual funding from the um, from Lambton County would have been matched by the other two over the course of time, and the provincial government with the fifty thousand dollars. And I would re be remiss if I did not mention um, Pat Davidson, who provided us with in kind resources over the the eight years. And it was because of Pat Davidson that we had Michelle Camus uh, enter and become part of our team. And he was the one who opened the doors to all the scientists that we have been able to uh, form associations with and who are carrying on the work that we are now uh, passing off to them. Thank you, Councillor Gillis. Uh, uh, Councillor McGugan. Yeah, Madam Ward, uh, 
through you to Councillor Gillis. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your dedication, because I remember asking a number of times over the last years, where are we, where are we going? Now, the conclusion there is, do you really think anything will happen now when it's transferred onto this next group of individuals, or are we hoping for hope? Councillor Gillis? Uh, thank you. Yes, actually, uh, when I referred to the Cancer Care Ontario, they have their documentation, they have their, um, uh, their research paper ready. What they're doing now is they're having it being peer-reviewed. That usually takes about a year, and then they will publish their findings. The Lambton Community Health Study has already seen their findings, and um, I, ca I can't say any more than that because it's embargoed. And, w and one thing we did understand when we came into this, uh, this entire operation uh, the lady who was helping us formulate with our terms of reference said to us, be prepared to be doing this for 15 years. And everyone could not believe their ears. But taking into account that it's a research project they were taking on, we had to formulate what the questions had to be. Then we had to disseminate what those questions would, how, how you would research those individual questions. Uh, it became clear to us that a volunteer organization meeting once a month is not going to be able to do what needs to be done. So you have to have re the research components being done by the experts in their field. And that's what we have done, and that's what Dr. Michelle Kimu allowed us to do and put us in contact with the people who are the experts in their field. Coming back to the respiratory, we do, uh, Lambton Public Health already has some information in that regard, and Dr. Lori Chan, working with Am Jurong, is working uh, right now on a research paper with the... Um, the ratio, the health ratios. So those things are in play. And when those things are released, uh, the board, as it is, will come back together again, look at it, and then release the findings in conjunction with public, uh, Lambton Public Health so that people will have an understanding. This is what your health study um, uh, found, discovered, and are giving you that information out. But the one thing, the risk assessment, was something we could not do and that's why we were asking you to support that recommendation to have the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change do that on our behalf. Thank you, you Councillor Gillis. So we uh, <clears throat> have a uh, recommendation duly moved and seconded. We've had a robust discussion. I'll now call the vote. All in favour of the recommendation? Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Councillor Gillis, for your presentation. Next, I would invite Ms. Ms. Laurel Van Dommelen, Branch Services Manager, um, would like to speak to County Council regarding the Makerspace project. This new public space will provide access to a wide range of tools and resources, hosting programs and workshops related to making do-it-yourself and innovation. Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Laurel Van Domlin. I'm the Branch Services Manager for the County of Lambton Libraries, if you haven't met me before. I'm pleased to be here today to speak about the Ontario Library Capacity Fund Grant, which we have received in the County of Lambton Libraries from the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. I'm going to speak for about 10 minutes, and I'm going to talk uh, to give you an update on the project, which is a focus of makerspaces, and how we'll use the grant to implement a makerspace first, initially at Sarnia Library, and then as a mobile makerspace that will go to various locations throughout the County of Lambton at the County of Lambton Libraries. I'm not sure, because I don't know many of you, if you want to just wiggle your finger if you've heard of makerspaces. Okay, so a few of you have, that's great. Um, so there is a movement, for those of you who don't, haven't heard of them before, there is a movement um, across Canada and in various countries to have makerspaces. Some are uh, volunteer driven, some, a lot of them are within public libraries, which is a unique and ideal place to have them because public libraries are accessible, they're in local communities, they're open in evenings and weekends. Um, and makerspaces are where the community can come to and use technology that they wouldn't have access to normally. It's not uh, low tech, it's really quite high tech. It's not something that you would buy off the shelf in your local uh, shop or your local um, retail outlet. So it's giving access to a variety of technology uh, to everyone in the community. 
So I'm just going to talk about the project overview. Um, phased over two years, 2016 and 2017, uh, we've been allocated $120,000 from the county of Lam uh, from the Ministry of Cult Tourism, Culture, and Sport uh, to use towards makerspaces. And a number of targets and outcomes are part of the success measurement of this project. Um, in phase one, which will be in 2016, uh, a permanent makerspace will be created on the second floor of Sarnia Library, uh, offering a variety of new technologies and robotics. And that phase is due to have a soft launch opening next Thursday, the 9th of June. So we've been working very hard and we'll have an official launch to the public uh, on June the 25th. And I do invite all of you to attend that day, it's a Saturday, uh, to come and see the technology, to come and see the space. Um, the second phase of the project uh, will involve a unique mobile maker space that will travel across the county, uh, offering a variety of technologies and robotics, and will increase the access of the maker space technology outside of the Sarnia area. Um, and it will ensure that communities um, will have access to the, to the offer on hand of maker space technology in their local area. So you're probably thinking, what kind of technology and robotics is being offered to the public? Uh, on the table in the middle, I've put a few items uh, that my colleagues at Sarnia Library made in the last couple of weeks. Um, so we have a laser cutter. So you'll see on the table uh, when you get a chance, we've made some lovely coasters and we've etched and engraved, uh, which our laser cutter can do quite well. We have a 3D printer, or two of them soon, uh, that can... We've got a model of the Colosseum that's been printed on a 3D printer on the table, uh, which is very interesting technology uh, that the public can access. We have a vinyl cutter, which can cut out images and objects very quickly, a book binder, uh, which the public can use, a sewing machine, a VHS DVD converter, and also a button maker on offer. So I do invite you to look at those items uh, when you get a chance in your break or at the end. So I want to talk quickly about how will the outcomes and success be measured of a project like this. We're hoping that the makerspaces will attract new and active borrowers to the County of Lambton libraries, and that we'll have higher levels of program attendance in our libraries because of the makerspaces. And also engaging non-traditional users. Um, I'm sure we're also all aware that book libraries are about books, and if you're not a reader, then I guess maybe you're not interested in the library. So we want to overcome that and offer through this opportunity that we have uh, to engage people who maybe never come to a library once more. And we also want to focus on social inclusion in the program offering so that a variety of offer in audiences are engaged. So we'll target seniors, adults, teens. It's not just for children. It's not just for, you know, mainstream library users. We want to think outside of the box so that we are making people think, gee, I didn't realize a library could do that, but it could. Uh, and I just want to speak very quickly uh, to the community involvement piece of the programming. So a key criteria for this grant is community involvement. Um, it can be Community involvement can be key to the makerspace success. It's an opportunity for us to have a more positive impact and allow the community to have a sense of ownership. So what would that look like in practical terms? Well, it could be that makers start leading programs for us in this space rather than having the traditional staff-led programming in libraries that we've always had. Uh, more opportunity for customers um, to be volunteers or for our, our clients to be volunteers in our libraries and local partners such as Lambton College or the school board to be re-engaged with libraries as well. Um, and it would be supplemental, so the community um, participation piece would be supplemental to what our staff deliver very well. So with that, questions and comments. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, Council, have you any questions? Councillor Weber. McDougall, uh, thanks for the presentation. The, uh, I guess the question in the, on the phase one and phase two, when will phase two be rolled out? Uh, is that happening in September? Or uh, if it's a two-year program, I guess the serving the rest of the county, can you... Uh, Expand on the timing. Uh, phase two, we're hoping to have rolled out by the end of this year, 
and then fully implemented in early 2017. Okay. Councillor McGugan. Madam Ward, uh, thank you. Now, you may have covered it. Is that cost all picked up by the province? So as part of the grant application, uh, we were awarded 120000 divided into two lots of 60000 um, Part of the grant is that we have in-kind contribution, much of which is our staffing time is in-kind contribution, and uh, you know some of the resources, such as the furniture that we have available from our own operating budgets to contribute towards this project. The technologies that I'm speaking of were, were bought with the um, grant money. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for your presentation this morning. And uh, I do believe, just as a reminder, what is the date, June 25th? Yes. Um, the official launch will be Saturday, June 25th, 11 to 5.30, Sarnia Library, Christina Street. I'll leave a leaflet on the table at the back as well. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, there's an email address, makerspace at county-lampton. Uh, you can contact, contact us anytime. Thank you. Okay, Council, moving on now, we'll uh, move to minutes of uh, Council open session and closed session, uh, reading and adoption of uh, open session dated May 4th, 2016, and closed dated March 2, 2016. Looking for a motion? Moved by Councillor Gillis, second by Councillor Case. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favour? Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Next uh, item on our agenda today is information reports. Um, we have an information report this morning from George Malay, General Manager of Sarnia Lambton Economic Partnership, submitted pursuant to motion number nine of Lambton County Council minutes dated uh, May 4th, 2016. Um, Council, Councillor Case. Well, Warden, uh, again, thanks to Mr. Malay for providing this and turning it around so quick. I think it's information that Council uh, needed to see and be able to update themselves on where we've been for the last uh, so many years. So, anyways, I want to thank Mr. Malay for the report. I will be bringing a further notice of motion to our July Council meeting based on this information. So, thanks again to Mr. Malay for putting it together. Uh, any other members? So, Councillor Case has served notice of motion for our July meeting, which is where we will um, discuss this more fully pursuant to that motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Case. So, we'll have a motion then to receive today's report. Councillor Broad, Councillor Cook, all in favour? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you very much. Okay, next committee minutes. Uh, I'm going to move first to uh, 10A, uh, committee AM minutes. I'm going to turn this part over to Councillor Weber. Thank you, Warden. Uh, through the County Council, uh, uh, Infrastructure Development Service, Public Health Service, Cultural Service is met on May the 18th, and I will present these minutes for consideration. Thank you, Councillor Weber. <clears throat> move through the call. Number one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Councillor Weber. Thank you, Warden. I would move the adoption of these minutes as presented. Seconded by uh, Councillor Marriott. All in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. We'll turn now to PM meeting uh, minutes dated May 18th, 2016. I'll turn that over to chair of that committee, Councillor McCharles. Uh, thank you, Warden McDougall and uh, members of County Council. The afternoon committee met on May 18th around 1 o'clock. 
and I present the minutes for your consideration. Thank you very much, Councillor McCharles. We'll move again through these minutes. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. Councillor McGugan. Yeah, Madam Ward, members of County Council, uh, I think this uh, letter from the Huron County passed also in the, our municipal packages was one from South Dundas, and I think it's really important that that Rural Economic Development Fund, the way it's worded through our government says it's going to be disbanded and it's going to be conjuncted with the Jobs and Opportunity Grant. Uh, people doing research tell me that there will not likely be any money spent in rural when it goes to the jobs and opportunities. And this past week, I did have a chance to meet with Vicki Luke, who is O'Maffer's representative, living and working out of London. I met with uh, a number of people in Brook Alveson interested in rural economic development. And she said that it's in limbo right now. There is no money there for rural economic development. I've asked my local member of Parliament, uh, who it happens to be a conservative to dig into it and get back to us. I really think that uh, we should support uh, this uh, resolution from Huron County. And there's also, I don't know how many have seen it, there's also one from South Dundas. And I would make a motion that we have the warden send a rather uh, impressive letter uh, to uh, our, our premier, the opposition leaders, and to uh, O'Mafra as well as uh, to uh, the finance minister, because I think this is really important. It just looks to me as if it's one more opportunity to pull something from rural Ontario. Okay, for council, um, the item that uh, Councillor McGugan is referring to was actually um, uh, the correspondence, so we'll go back to that. Councillor Case? Huron County in the Dundas uh, motion at our recent council meeting, so I will second Councillor McGugan's motion. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Follow up, Councillor McGugan. Did I miss the spot where I brought it up? Yes, but that's all right. It's okay. not a problem. Okay, thank you. We'll work with it. No problem. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Okay, so we'll go back to. Uh, Item six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, and I'll turn this back to you, Councillor McCharles. Thank you, Ward McDougall. I move the uh, uh, minutes of uh, this day's minutes as amended. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. We have no items tabled from uh, previous uh, meetings. Um, just before I turn it over to a couple of members who I know wish to uh, bring up other business, I want to point out to you um, as uh, your warden who sits on the TSL board, the uh, last meeting that we had, the new tourism um, experiences that matter guide was released along with the Navigate a uh, promotional piece that is available for your perusal this morning. I would like to add that Tourism Sarnia Lambton is very pleased to tell us that these are all local photos. This uh, guide has been undertaken by some uh, fresh new thought. Um, the ads are bigger and easier to read. The guide itself is AODA compliant, which is very, very important for um, the traveling public, and if you go to the index section at the back, you'll, or the directory section at the back, you'll see it's easy to read. It uh, leads um, visitors to various uh, municipalities, encouraging the public all the time to come back to TSL. It's a nice piece of work. We do fund TSL, and I thought it was important that uh, each of you had a copy of that if your municipalities 
uh, wish any more, you can contact TSL. I'm sure they get out and deliver them. So then I will turn this over to other members. Councillor Arnold, please. Yes, Warden. Our next uh, committee meeting day on June the 15th, and I was wondering if uh, we could move that to the day before, which will be June the 14th. The reason being is because of the Great Lakes uh, and St. Lawrence Cities initiative. It starts on the 15th in New York State. And uh, I'm just wondering if we could uh, have a chance to move that over. Do you need a motion for that? Uh, would that be appropriate? Yes. So I will make that a motion. And just uh, as, as well, I know we have a little celebration after the next committee meeting day, and, uh, and I understand from staff that that can be relocated as well to the day before. Move the that would move the committee meeting then one day ahead. Councillor Bruzewitz? I, I would appreciate if the council decide to do that, because I have a conflict on that day as well. I have to be in Kingston for the Good Roads Board meeting, and uh, I will not be able to be here. So, so it's not just the uh, council, uh, Arnold. I have exactly the same problem. Uh, Councillor Gillis and then Councillor Gilliland. Uh, just to make sure that I understand, we're on other business, are we not, Madam Chair? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to inform uh, County Councillors that I've been appointed to the FCM National Municipal Energy Infrastructure Task Force. It is not incumbent on being a board member. Uh, this I just received this yesterday. I'm sorry, am I speaking out of turn? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. That's why I asked. All in favor? Oh, we do have a comment to make about that. Was there any other member who wished to speak to that motion? I thought that's what you were speaking to, Councillor Gillis. I'm sorry. And um, uh, so I will call the vote. All in favour? Opposed? Okay, that motion is carried, so committee will move to the 14th with regrets recognised on this floor today that Councillor Gilliland will not be able to attend. Um, um, other business? Councillor Knapper? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ward McDougall. Uh, great pleasure today to extend an invitation. Uh, this Sunday, June the 5th, we're going to be dedicating a Lamb Recton Park. As many of you recall, you read in the paper where it was uh, donated to the, uh, the town of Plimpton, Wyoming, and it's been in operation since 1926. And uh, so we're having a dedication ceremony, and we're calling it uh, a walk down memory lane where. Uh, People that went to that uh, uh, camp over the years and come and maybe uh, renew old acquaintances and uh, go through the many cabins where they've signed their names and things. And uh, we have it, uh, it starts about 12 o'clock. From 1 to 2, we have the, uh, the Forced Excelsior Band in concert for an hour, and there'll be, uh, there'll be uh, games and stuff for the kids. And uh, just a fun afternoon where you can uh, come out and renew old acquaintances. It's also an opportunity to... Uh, view any of the cabins that's there. We've uh, partnered up with the You Can Bid Auction, and they'll be going on sale online on, uh, in June, but there'll be a viewing on Sunday. So uh, for these cabins, you, you can maybe buy them. So it, it's just, uh, we're unveiling a stone, we're renaming the park, and just invite anybody out and, and tell your friends that's went there. I know it's, there's a lot of people that attended that camp, and. Uh, there's a lot of sentimental value there, and there was a lot of friendships made there. So uh, we just come on out to Plimpton, and uh, Dale Broad, and uh, he didn't realize that there was beaches in Plimpton. He could maybe take a stroll down the beach and <laughs> get out of that gumbo that he's used to. Thank you. Could you uh, re uh, just remind us after that, Councillor Knapper, of the date again, please? It would be this Sunday, June the 5th. It's a Sunday. starts at 12. The music starts at 1. then Weber, then McGugan. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I apologize for the confusion. Uh, as I said yesterday, I was informed that I was appointed to the FCM National Municipal Energy Infrastructure Task Force. Uh, it is not incumbent on being a board member. 
this infrastructure task force is going to be doing um, a study on uh, pipelines across Canada and to educate the members, particularly of FCM, because there has been a lot of consternation between members uh, from British Columbia and members from Quebec with regard to pipelines and the building of pipelines. And we wanted to make it known that there are thousands and thousands of um, feet of pipelines across the country, miles of uh, pipeline, and uh, even in Lambton County underneath our very feet. So to just um, try to uh, dismiss uh, pipelines as, as something that uh, the majority of people don't want it would be wrong. So it's, a, it's an educational task force that I've been assigned to. The other thing I wanted to uh, thank County Council for was to uh, nominate me again for the Board of FCM. And I also wanted to let you know that I am part of a panel discussion for those of you who are there uh, at FCM this week. And, and it's going to be happening on Saturday morning at 10.30, so you'll get the opportunity to sleep in. And I am uh, uh, involved in a panel discussion with uh, a mem uh, the Deputy Mayor of Leduc, Alberta. And it's about comp corporate sponsorships and municipalities. It's an open mic. So I hope that I will see some friendly faces in the crowd. Councillor Bradley, did you wish to speak on this item? Okay, so I will um, recognize in order then Councillor Weber, Councillor McGugan, and Councillor Bradley. Thank you. Thank you, Warden McDougall, and uh, through the County Council, uh, note 18 on the agenda is the, uh, looking for someone to be a host for the uh, county barbecue or steak fry in September. I believe it's following our County Council meeting, which starts in the morning now, so I'm suggesting that we have the lunch at uh, the barbecue at noon on the beach in Grand Bend. It's two days after the uh, uh, Labor Day weekend. And if you go to page 15 in the uh, Navigate, you, if the weather's proper, you should be able to parasail that day. So we will, uh, we'll, we are, uh, Lampton Shores would be a willing host and, and look forward to uh, hosting that barbecue. Thank you very much, Councillor Weber. And just before we leave you, um, the Rotary stage is also opening. Uh, maybe you'd like to remind any members of council um, who've been involved with that of the day of that event as well? Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, the Creative Culture Committee has uh, helped uh, support a project in uh, Lambton Shores and the Grand Bend uh, and Area Rotary Club have donated over $300,000 to build a community stage on the beach. Um, the opening for that is June the 11th and 12th, uh, starting at 2 o'clock, both days, and music and entertainment right through till uh, the sun sets both evenings, the Saturday and the Sunday. So I would invite everyone, if you're available, to come on up to uh, the beach and uh, see what we have to offer. Councilor McGugan. Yeah, Madam Ward and members of County Council, I'd just like to remind you that uh, once again, uh, the Kalani groups in Lambton County, along with many other groups, the Chamber, uh, the Lambton Federation of Agriculture, have a breakfast on the farm. It is June the 18th uh, from 9 a.m. till noon. You do need tickets. Uh, tickets are free, uh, just like all the food in Canada is basically free. And uh, also that uh, it's held on the Brian and Joanne Pelador Boer Farm, on Confed, so uh, it's a great opportunity. It's moved from the Forbes family, which was a dairy operation. Now this is uh, goats and beef cattle. So it's an opportunity to come and see what really happens and how food is produced. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGugan and uh, Councillor Bradley. I have one item that's uh, I consider urgent, and that is related to um, the proposed cap and trade legislation in, in Ontario. And. Um, and the whole climate change legislation. Uh, the Economic Partnership has submitted a detailed brief, but it's very apparent that um, the details are not available. And the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, um, myself and others, have been calling for them to delay it for one year until we can get a full handle on the impact on the <coughs> chemical sector, the agriculture sector, the auto sector, and today that information is not available. So I think it's a reasonable request for County Council to ask the Premier and the government for one year, it is not in opposition to the overall goal, although we may question about how it's being 
brought about compared to other jurisdictions, but to ask for one year so there can be a proper assessment done by uh, probably the, the major state, well, it is, it's the major stakeholders in the economy in Ontario are not part of this discussion. And it's going to be implemented in a manner that could have a devastating economic and social impact across Ontario. And I, again, if it's good enough, it should be open enough that we fully understand the ramifications. And if there's one area that has real concerns about this legislation, it is this area because of our history and our present industry. So what I'm asking County Council is to ask the Premier to delay for one year the cap and delay trade legislation and to give us proper times to assess the impacts on our communities. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. That is a motion that is seconded by Councillor Arnold. Further discussion on that? All in favour of that motion? Opposed? That motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Is there any other items? Seeing none, okay, I'll turn the uh, meeting back then to notice of bylaws. Mr. Cribbs. Thank you, Warden. There's a motion that bylaws numbers 12 through 17 of 2016 as circulated be taken as read a first and second time. That's moved by Councillor McKenzie and seconded by Councillor Marriott. Warden, there's also a motion that bylaws number 12 through 17 of 2016 be taken as read a third time and finally passed. That's moved by Councillor Case and seconded by Councillor Cook. Councillor Bruzewitz, Gillis, all in favour? Opposed, carried. Thank you.